And some of us didn't catch it. Didn't, let me show you the real blessing. He didn't mean to say it was for Mount Lebanon. It was really for two students in Peekskill. But God turned it around. As he was talking, God turned it around. Somebody better start praising God right now.
lift your hand for the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you showed us, God, that if we trust in you, God, if we live right before you, you showed us that you're turning around, God. Father, you showed us this morning, God, if we live right before you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. If we lay our burdens before you, God, Jesus, you're turning around. There's somebody doubting right now. I pray right now as my hands is lifted, turn it around in that brother's life. Turn it around in that sister's life. In the name of Jesus, I declare it in this building right now. Whatever I was going through, I'm coming out of it. In the name of Jesus, I was bound in 2017. I didn't know how to get out. But in 2019, I'm coming out in the name of Jesus. My children's coming out. Hallelujah, Jesus. My finances is coming out. Hallelujah. I declare it. I speak it. I believe it. In the name that's above every name. But in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Do. When 
whatever you want of God. This is your house. This is God's house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do what you want to do, God. Hallelujah. You are beyond time. Time has no restriction on you. You move in eternity. Hallelujah, Jesus. Time has no restriction on you. Move in eternity and reveal yourself in time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. What the devil tried to do in time, God has already worked it out in eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time can't restrict me. No matter what my age is. Hallelujah. The devil has no hold on me. Because I'm free in Jesus. Somebody shout I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. We're going to give a word right now. Everything stops. Everything right now. Amen, man. Get your Bibles out. We're going to get a short word and then I'm going to lay hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to lay hands. We're going to go right into, hallelujah, ushers. I want you to usher them in, in a circle from the back all around to the front. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to lay hands after God has spoken the word. We're going to install the people and we're going to our next service. God has already spoken. We speak in agreement. And God has already said. We say amen. Let the church say amen. We're in agreement. Get your Bibles out. Said unto them, it is said, 
Somebody shout, it is said. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned unto the power. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Somebody shout, it is written. Hallelujah, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is in agreement of what you have already done, oh God. Your word is in a line, God. It's in right in line with what you have done, oh God. Father, you have dispatched your angels to take charge over us, oh God. God, I thank you for the angel that's around me now, God. That's why I didn't die. That's why I caught, my car could not turn over. That's how come every bill is paid. Because you have dispatched your angels to take charge over me, God. And I thank you, God, for what you've done in Jesus' name. God, I am nothing, but you are everything. Use your servant. Take me out of myself and let me flow in your gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. 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 I'm not going to be before you long. Just touch your neighbor and tell them, I, I was kept, I was kept in, the in the wilderness. He kept me. I was kept in the wilderness. Some of us, hallelujah, if you knew our testimonies, if you knew where we have come from, if you only knew what we had to go through to get where we are right now, if God was to literally pull back the sheets and allow you to see my life and to see all that I've gone through, it would blow your mind to see all of the things that God has brought me through and all of the things that God has kept me from. My praise comes from a place of just knowing where God has brought me. I don't need to tell you all my business, but I'm praising God because when I think about what he has kept me from, I got to praise him openly for what he has done in secret. I don't have to tell you my business. It's between me and God. I don't need to share you all of the things that God has done for me. All I can say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, do I put a witness in here? I don't know where I would be. That's why I'm so happy today because I know where he's brought me from. You don't have to know. You don't have to understand where my praise comes. Just understand that there's nothing that's going to stop me from praising God. He always throws a glimpse of my life before me when I get in a funk and I don't want to praise him. He just gives me a little glimpse of where he brought me from. And when I look at where he brought me, I snap out of myself and I stop praising God because I know if it wasn't for God, I would not be here right now. Hallelujah. I may look intelligent. I may look like I got a lot of money, but I may just got a nickel in my pocket, but I'm going to praise God like I got a million dollars because God didn't have to do what he did for me. And I'm so grateful for what, oh God, I'm so grateful for what God, so grateful for what God has done. Just so grateful for what God has done for me that I got to praise him because I thank him for what he's done for me. You don't have to thank him. I thank him for myself. If I got to be the only one in the church praising God, I'm going to stand up and praise him. If I got to praise him through offering, if I got to praise him through the song, I'll praise him by myself because I'm so grateful. Somebody shout, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for what God has done for me. And every now and then, temptation slips up and shows me things. It entices me to do things that I don't even really think of doing, but it entices me because it wants me to not be grateful. It wants me to sit there and act as if everything is all right. There are some people here today who couldn't run around the church because they don't want people to think that they're going through, but I don't care who thinks what I'm going through. I'll let you know. Just ask 
me. I ain't got to hide nothing. Yeah, I was on drugs. Yes, I was on alcohol. Yes, I used to run around. Yeah, you got it right. That's the story of my life. But touch a neighbor, tell them that's then, but that's not now. That was back then, but that's not now. He changed me. Hallelujah. I'm praising him for the change in my life. He changed. He worked in the inside. And what you see is what he did from the inside out. If you only knew my story, how he changed me. He took the taste away. He took the desire away. He took the things that I wanted to do out of my mind. And all I can say is to God. Understand, he says, and Jesus, filled of the Holy Ghost, returned from, from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. I can't deal with the 10th verse until I deal with the first verse. Look at what he says, and Jesus being filled of the Holy Ghost. When he helps us, to understand that we are going to be tempted. But he helps us to understand that the only thing that, come, that, that can come back Hallelujah, my temptation is the spirit of God that is in me. Look at what he says here. He didn't say in the word of God that I had a portion of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible said that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Touch a name and tell him you need to be filled. We need to understand that we're going to be tempted. But the only thing that's going to bring you through temptation is that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about a shout. I'm not talking about lifting your hands. I'm talking about a Holy Spirit that loves people when I don't want to love them. When they don't like me, I like them anyway because I have the Holy Spirit in me. I love you even though you don't love me because I have the Holy Spirit in me so I can go through temptation because the Holy Ghost is working in me. Hallelujah. Can I preach the word I want to preach? Some of us don't understand that that person in your life is a setup. Sometimes God people put people, places, and things in your life not because you have earned it but the devil setting you up. Look at the text here. He says he is led by the spirit in the wilderness. Some of us need to understand that you're in your wilderness time of your life. And you need to understand that you're not going to make it through unless you are led by the spirit. I can't be led by my education. I can't be led by my relationships. I can't be led by my money. I can't be led by my position. But I got to be led by the Holy Spirit. successful, if I'm going to be positioned for success, I got to be led by the Holy Spirit. I just can't be an usher because I want to wear a white uniform, but I got to do it because I've been led by the Spirit. I can't just preach because I have the gift to gab or teach because I know how to teach, but I got to do it because I'm led to do it because when I do it, I'm not doing it, but it's the spirit. That's why we got to be careful who preaches to us, who teaches us, who lays hands on us. Because if you're not led by the spirit, then you'll put a spirit on me. That's not on God. If you don't talk to me, make sure that the Lord assigned you to deal with what's He says he was coming from Jordan. We know that he was being baptized by John. 
We saw it. We saw it in the text. We saw what happened when he was baptized. We saw a dove come upon the shoulders of Jesus in the form of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so before God the Father sent him to the wilderness, he gave him the Holy Spirit so that he can go through the wilderness. Some of us are trying to go through it without Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of us are trying to have relationships without Jesus because our need to have it is greater than our need to have Jesus. Watch the text here. We understand now that he is led by that spirit that we saw in the third, second chapter where he's been baptized. He's baptized by John. He's baptized now in the water. He's baptized by the Holy Spirit. We see it in chapter 2, but now, hallelujah, because of what he did in chapter 2, he's able now to do in chapter 4. Some of us need to understand that we're never going to make it through the wilderness until we do what Jesus did in chapter 2. We have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm not just talking about water baptism, but I'm talking about being baptized so that I can have the fullness of God inside of me. I'm not talking about a little hallelujah, a little thank you Jesus, but a conviction that's working on the inside that I see working in the outside. It don't start in the outside first, but it starts in the inside. in verse 10 for it is written here he speaks the word of God because of the Holy Spirit that is working in you hallelujah what's in you is what's going to come out of you if you ain't got no word in you then no word is going to come out of you here you are going through your wilderness experience and the reason why you feel that you're being beaten up is because you got no word in you situation because the spirit of God is not working in you. You're rowing through it but you have no spirit in you. Here we see Christ going through it but he speaks the word of God and the word of God takes him through it. It's not like you can't get through it brothers and sisters but the problem is you got no power and no authority to get through it. The devil sees you but I don't need the devil to see me. I need him to see my power and my authority. The reason why the car couldn't turn over is because of the power and the authority. The reason why cancer couldn't take me out is because the power and the authority in me stood up to cancer. And cancer had to bow because my power and my authority has power over cancer. Touch your neighbor, tell him I have power. Now I understand that it wasn't just the therapy I went through for my drinking and drug habit, but it was the power of God that was resonating in me. Because some of us made it through and others didn't make it. How in the world, after all I did, I'm the one that made it and there are others that did far less that didn't make it through. The reason why I made it through is because in eternity, God had given you an inner power and an inner authority because he knew in time that you were going to do some things that you shouldn't do. And so he released it at just the right time when the devil wanted to kill you. The devil couldn't kill you because my power and my authority stood up to the enemy. And I said to the enemy in the spirit, it is written. Tell me it is written. When I didn't know the word, 
There was a word that was planted in me in eternity when God created me in my mother's womb. He planted a word in me even though I fell, even though I made a mistake, even though I did things I shouldn't have did. I'm still here because of the word of God that was planted in me. Is there anybody in the house that want to praise God? That's why I gotta fast. That's why I gotta study the word. 
That's why I keep telling you to come to Bible study. That's why I keep telling you to come to Sunday school. Because I don't know where you are. God knows where you are. But wherever you are, you need to equip yourself with the word of God. Because your temptation may be at the end, but it's only for a season. More word, more stronger he makes me. So that when my season is up and the devil comes back, I'm strong enough to handle everything that he throws at me. You made it through one thing. I made it through another. Don't you celebrate too quick. Because it may seem like I'm in my springtime right now. But how many know that winter's coming? There's some of us, we're content. We don't want to come to Sunday school. There's no time to come to Sunday school. I'm so busy trying to achieve. I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to be successful. I'm trying to have more than the generation before me. But what we do not understand, that whatever you do, you can't do it without God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some of us are building kingdoms. Hallelujah, all your work is building kingdoms. And here you are telling God to go to the top of it and telling him to jump down. But we must understand that if God didn't build the kingdom, it won't last. All your working, all your working, got two jobs are working, three jobs are working, running around here trying to accomplish. I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to be better than the generation before me. I'm trying to have more. I'm doing all of these to get what God has already created in eternity. He's already created a way of escape. Oh, I want to preach this. Because, hallelujah, I'll, listen, even though it may look like I'm going to be in poverty, because he made a way of escape, I'll never see it. Because of what God has spoken over my life. Working two jobs ain't going to do it. Getting all the education in the world ain't going to do it. The only thing that's going to do it is if my life is in line with God's will. If my life is in God's will, God will take one job, move you to the head of the line, pay you enough money that you don't have to. You hear what I'm saying? We're talking about God. So that we can see the power 
of the word of God. Understand, your wilderness is when you learn who God is. I didn't know who God was until he led me through the wilderness. He, he led me through. He, he led me through. He led me through the wilderness. He didn't let me die in the wilderness. He led me through the wilderness. I'm done. Watch this. I saw his greatest miracles in the wilderness. I didn't know how powerful he was until he brought me through the wilderness. Some of you are there right now, but it was meant for you to go through it. But go through it and allow God to show you who he is. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, please. Let us stand to our feet. What a mighty God we serve. Deep, he's been with us all day. All day. He's been with us. Last night, he set the atmosphere for the day. That's why God had to discipline me. Because we need to be under that fire. All of us can't be under the fire for whatever reason. But if I'm under the fire and I touch you, then the fire is going to get on you. So I say to you, my brother and my sister, there's some of you right now that's really, you ready to quit in the wilderness. Some of you are ready to give up because you're in the wilderness. You don't think God loves you because you see your life in the wilderness. Why would God take me through this? Does he not love me that he allowed me to go through this? But God is saying, the reason why you're going through this is because I love you. Because I'm building something in you that needs to be built. Is there anybody here today that wants to come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism? I want to come and I want to be under a covering with a man of God, with a woman of God.
calling you by your name and saying, come.